the five songs of King Wolfharth. Shore's Tongue. The first song of King Wolfharth is ancient, circa First Era 500. After the defeat of the Alessian army at the Glenumbria Moors, where King Hoag Merkiller was slain, Wolfharth of Atmora was elected by the Pact of Chieftains. His thum was so powerful that he could not verbally swear into the office, and scribes were used to draw up his oaths. Immediately thereafter, the scribes wrote down the first new law of his reign, a fiery reinstatement of the traditional Nordic pantheon. The edicts were outlawed, their priests put to the stake, and their halls set ablaze. The shadow of King Borges had ended for a span. For his zealotry, King Wolfharth was called Shore's Tongue and Ismir, Dragon of the North. Kind's Son The second song of King Wolfharth glorifies his deeds in the eyes of the old gods. He fights the eastern orcs and shouts their chief into hell. He rebuilds the 418th step of High Hrothgar, which had been damaged by a dragon. When he swallowed a thundercloud to keep his army from catching cold, the Nords called him the Breath of Kine. Old Knocker. The third song of King Wolfharth tells of his death. Orki, an enemy god, had always tried to ruin the Nords, even in Atmora, where he stole their years away. Seeing the strength of King Wolfharth, Orki summoned the ghost of Alduin Time Eater again. Nearly every Nord was eaten down to six years old. Boy Wolfharth pleaded to Shore, the dead chieftain of the gods, to help his people. Shore's own ghost then fought the Time Eater on the spirit plane, as he did at the beginning of time, and he won, and Orki's folk the orcs were ruined. As Boy Wolfharth watched the battle in the sky, he learned a new thume. What happens when you shake the dragon just so? He used this new magic to change his people back to normal. In his haste to save so many, though, he shook too many years out on himself. He grew older than the Greybeards and died. The flames of his pyre were said to have reached the hearth of Kine itself. The Ash King The fourth song of King Wolfharth tells of his rebirth. The dwarves and devils of the eastern kingdoms had started to fight again, and the Nords hoped they might reclaim their ancient holdings there because of it. They planned an attack, but then gave up, knowing that they had no strong king to lead them. Then in walked the devil of Dagoth, who swore he came in peace. Moreover, he told the Nords a wondrous thing. He knew where the heart of Shore was. Long ago, the chief of the gods had been killed by elven giants, and they ripped out Shore's heart and used it as a standard to strike fear into the Nords. This worked until Iskramor shouted some sense and the Nords fought back again. Knowing that they were going to lose eventually, the elven giants hid the heart of Shore so that the Nords might never have their god back. But here was the devil of Dagoth with good news. The dwarves and devils of the Eastern Kingdom had his heart, and this was the reason for their recent unrest. The Nords asked the Devil of Dagoth why he might betray his country mare so, and he said that the devils have betrayed each other since the beginning of time, and this was so, and so the Nords believed him. The tongue sung Shore's ghost into the world again. Shore gathered an army as he did of old, and then he sucked in the long-strewn ashes of King Wolfarth and remade him, for he needed a good general. But the Devil of Dagoth petitioned to be that general too, and he pointed out his role as the blessed harbinger of this holy war. So Shore had two generals, the Ash King and the Devil of Dagoth, and he marched on the Eastern Kingdoms with all the sons of Skyrim. Red Mountain The fifth song of King Wolfharth is sad. The survivors of the disaster came back under a red sky. That year is called Sun's Death. The Devil of Dagoth had tricked the Nords, for the heart of Shore was not in the Eastern Kingdoms, and had never been there at all. As soon as Shore's army had got to Red Mountain, all the devils and dwarves fell upon them. Their sorcerers lifted the mountain and threw it onto Shore, trapping him underneath Red Mountain until the end of time. They slaughtered the sons of Skyrim, but not before King Wolfharth killed King Dumalakath the dwarf orc, and doomed his people. Then Vec the Devil blasted the Ash King into hell, and it was over. Later, Kine lifted the ashes of the ashes of Ismir into the sky, saving him from hell and showing her sons the color of blood when it is brought by betrayal, and the Nords will never trust another devil again. The Secret Song of Wolfharth Ash King The Truth at Red Mountain The heart of Shore was in Resdane, as Dagoth Ur had promised, as Shore's army approached the westernmost bank of the Inner Sea, 
they stared across at Red Mountain, where the Dwemeri armies had gathered. News from the scouts reported that the Chimeri forces had just left Narsis, and that they were taking their time joining their cousins against the Nords. Dagoth Ur said that the tribunal had betrayed their king's trust, that they sent Dagoth Ur to Lorcan, for that is what they called shore in Resdane, so that the god might wreak vengeance upon the dwarves for their hubris, that Nerevar's peace with the Dwemer would be the ruin of the Velothi Way. This was the reason for the slow muster, Dagoth Ur said. The armies grow. And Lorcan, for that is what they called Shore and Resdane, said, I do not wreak vengeance on the dwarves for the reasons that the tribunal might believe I do. Nevertheless, it is true that they will die by my hand, and any whoever should side with them. This Nerevar is the son of Boethia, one of the strongest Padomaics. He is a hero to his people, despite his tribunal, and he shall muster enough that this battle will be harder going still. We will need more than what we have. And so Dagoth Ur, who wanted the dwarves as dead as the tribunal did, went to Kogaran and summoned his house Chapthiel, his Nixhounds, his wizards, archers, his stolen men of brass. And the Ash King, Volfarth, Hori Ismir, went and made peace with the orcs in spite of his Nordic blood, and they brought many warriors but no wizards at all. Many Nords could not bring themselves to ally with their traditional enemies, even in the face of Red Mountain. They were close to desertion. Then Wolfarth said, Don't you see where you really are? Don't you know who Shore really is? Don't you know what this war is? And they looked from the king to the god to the devils and orcs, and some knew, really knew, and they are the ones that stayed. The Doom Drum Nerevar carried Keening, a dagger made of the sound of the shadow of the moons. His champions were Dumak Dwarf King who carried a hammer of divine mass, and Alandro Sul, who was the immortal son of Azura, and wore the wraith mail. They met Lorcan at the last battle of Red Mountain. Lorcan had his heart again, but he had long been from it, and he needed time. Wolfarth met Sul, but could not strike him, and he fell from grievous wounds, but not before shouting Sul blind. Degath Ur met Dumak and slew him, but not before Sunder struck his lord's heart. Nerevar turned away from Lorcan and struck down Degath Ur in rage, but he took a mortal wound from Lorcan in turn. But Nerevar feigned the death that was coming early, and so struck Lorcan with surprise on his side. The heart had been made solid by Sunder's tuning blow, and Keening could now cut it out. And it was cut out, and Lorcan was defeated, and the whole ordeal was thought over.